Welcome, everybody. My name is Corey Allen. Of course, uh, this is the Overton Report. And today is actually a really special day. We're joined by two of the most well-respected Republicans in the state of South Carolina, the uh, the chairman of the Clarendon County Republican Party, uh, Moy Graham, and the chairman of the Sumter County Party, uh, Mr. Bill Oden. How are you doing? Doing great. Hope everybody out there is doing great this afternoon also. Awesome. So today we are going to talk about a letter that is being sent to one representative so far, and uh, I believe it's also going to be sent out to the Democrat Party, the various county parties for the Democrats. So this is a letter that refers to the infamous Crystal Matthews circus that we've all been witnessing thus far. And for those who uh, for those who aren't aware, Crystal Matthews has been all all over the news. First, she uh, and we're going to play you a couple of clips and we're going to talk about uh, we're going to have a conversation about that and we're going to kind of discuss why they felt it was necessary to to pin this letter and and send it out to some other Democrat state reps who have failed to condemn uh, Crystal's language and actions. So the first thing is Crystal Matthews was caught by Project Veritas on a police phone or a jail phone, a jailhouse phone, talking to a political activist who's actually in jail for threatening the life of an elected official. Uh, she was set up with him because he has a large following in uh, in leftist communities. And she was speaking with him and she talked about dope boy money, uh, using drug money to fund the campaign. Uh, she talked about putting people's names down and donating to her campaign on their behalf. Highly, highly illegal stuff. And, uh, and also taking up signs of the competitors. So first we're going to play a clip that project veritas broke on that story and then i'm gonna i, I want to talk to you guys and, and figure out how you know how this made you feel <laughs> when you when you first heard this part of it my first question is this what can we do to help you with your campaign first of all i know y'all are both activists and i am too in my own way right i'm very mm -hmm. much right. i'm very much a in a lot of ways, but I know how to turn it off and turn it on. You know, I, I know how to I know how to be in certain spaces. You know, you right, gotta right. be able to turn it off and turn it on. Right. So right. like we literally uh like this is this is how you this is the only way you're gonna change the the dynamics in South Carolina. You gotta find some folks that are a little bit polished, maybe are not you know, nobody really knows them that well. Maybe they haven't really been politically active, but we need some secret sleepers. Like you need, we need them to run as the other side, even though they for our side. You know, I, I tell my right. colleagues up here all the time, I'm gonna be that bitch every day of the week. We have too many people that that ain't us, ain't out for us, and look okay. like us. I mean, but honestly, these ain't the same type of black people that I grew up around. I don't right. recognize these right. black men. I could be listen. I can move in all kind of circles, but I'm a nigga. Heart. I love black people. I feel safest around my people. So I feel like y'all. We need sleepers, but we need a group of sleepers. We need some folks that can wear all black at night and take their yard signs down when they when they sleeping. The same shit they do to us, just the other way. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? Just like when somebody drop money and you pick it up. You pick that shit up and keep walking. Right. <laughs> We got to take back some of these seats, especially in these local elections. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we need we need people to run as Republicans in these local elections. And I still got to struggle to raise money for my campaign. Where the f*** is my black people with money? I don't care about no dope money. Give me that dope boy money. Where the f***ing dope? Where the duffel bag boys? Get you, find you somebody from your family that don't even know you donating to my campaign and put that shit under their name. No. First thoughts. First, are are are, are either of y'all aware of of any incident where Republicans in South Carolina have taken campaign signs down of of Democrat opponents? Not in Sumter County. I don't know of any any right. incidents that I know of in Sumter County or the surrounding counties where Republicans have actually taken down 
our opposing our opponent signs. Mm -hmm. No, no, okay. I would, I, I would, uh, I'd come down on them hard if I if I even found out anything like that. Absolutely. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Let's let's start uh, let's start with you, Bill. What what do you when you when when this first broke and you just listened to it again? What what was running through your mind hearing this? Well, first of all, uh, for me, a bit of disgust. What she was doing is portraying the stereotype that's been presented to, uh, for Americans of African descent for a long time. You know, we're thugs, we're ghetto, uh, we don't know how to act. Uh, and when somebody is articulate, somebody dresses right, somebody thinks uh, about family freedom in the country, then they're considered turncoats. And the fact that she said we need people, they need people to act like a Republican, well, she doesn't understand that a lot of uh, Americans of African descent are leaving the Democrat party just because of that mindset. Uh, so I had a sense of disgust that we have somebody actually in a representative role in South Carolina that doesn't mind cussing, doesn't mind talking about where all my dope boys at, uh, to keep purveying that stereotype uh, that a lot of people look at Af Americans of African descent and think that's where we all are. A, yeah, I, I could definitely understand that. Um, Moy, do you, do you know if any, at that point, did anyone in uh, Clarendon County, any of the Democrats, did they make any statements? Did they condemn what happened? Did, did anything was there any ramification? No, I wish I wish they had it been. Uh, but I have I'm pretty close friends with the uh, chairwoman of the Clarendon County Democrat Party, and she hadn't she hasn't said anything to me about it at all. And uh, uh, you know I have I have a lot of friends that Democrats, and they're shying away from this where they they shouldn't because if it was one of ours, I'd, I, again I'd I'd be I'd be out there. You know, that's that's actually a good point. What do you think would happen? And this is to, to anyone who wants to answer. What do you think would happen if, what do you think would happen if, say, Tim Scott were caught on the phone saying this? What would what would be what would be the headline on CNN? Yeah, no, it would be ugly. I'll tell you that. Uh, the, for, after course, we know we know we don't have to worry about Tim Scott, but uh, hypothetically speaking, uh, uh, I. I don't know what to say other than every time I've I've heard this now a couple of times and uh, mm -hmm. it just it disgusts me that uh, this is the year 2022 and uh, we still having to put up with this from you know that uh, people being so derogatory and racist this is just pure racist is what it is. You were just well, talking about white representatives. That is that not racist? Is that not racist? No. Yeah, that's that's valid. What, uh, what about you, Bill? And I agree with Moy. That's uh, as they always want to paint Republicans as racist, all conservatives as racist, but this is out and out racism. Mm -hmm. And not only if Tim Scott came out and did it, if any Republican came out and said these type of things, it'd be all over major mainstream media, mm -hmm. CNN, M MSNBC, ABC. Everybody would be broadcasting this, and this would be their headline. Uh, so it's amazing that it makes the uh, conservative news media actually bring this out for people across the country to see what's going on. I think I think a lot of that has to do with them being scared, and and, and, and I'm not talking about scared, scared. But if if a lot of people think if we start pushing this, then we're doing it for all the wrong reasons instead of a. Uh, trying to, to uh, it, it, we found something here that we can push out there and say, oh, this is racist. It is racist, but, uh, you know, if we have to make sure Republicans are seen a lot different than Democrats and conservatives and Christians are seen, you know, uh, as someone that wants to extend an olive leaf all the time, where it's time to get over that. We got to, we got to fight, fight this wherever it exists. No, I completely agree with that. Now, you know, that brings us, uh, you're talking about the, the racist aspect, aspect of it. That brings us to what happened just about a week, week and a half ago. James O'Keefe came to Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, yeah. Project Veritas, uh, James O'Keefe founded Project Veritas and Project Veritas Action. He came to Charleston, South Carolina to give a talk and kind of tell us what was going on. 
Uh, and at that point, another Crystal Matthews video uh, was released. This Project Veritas video took place at a restaurant and she was talking to uh, to a young, uh, a young black man who, who is a journalist for what mainstream media often calls a, a white supremacist far right organization, Project Veritas. Um, and she went on a, a racist tirade, the likes of which I, I honestly, I don't know if I've heard anything like it since the Jim Crow era, honestly, from politicians, mm -hmm. at least. My district is heavily Republican and it's heavily white. Wow. We're not straight to the white people. I'm from a mostly white town. Yeah. And let me tell you one thing. You gotta know who you deal with. Like, yeah. you, you gotta treat them like s. Like, I mean, yeah. they, that's the only way yeah. to respect you. Like, yeah, no. I, 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 I keep them right here, like, under my thumb. Like, yeah. that's where I keep them. Like, yeah. like you have to. Yeah. Like, otherwise, they get out of control like kids. Trust me. <laughs> so, you know, like, for me, all these other people are tiptoeing around them, and I'm like, no, that's some white shit. I ain't doing that. Yeah. They be like, yeah. Yeah. well, I'm just going to say it's some white shit. Yeah. And that was my problem with Bernie, because he was talking to an all-black crowd, and he was afraid to say black shit. I said, if I'm talking to an all-black crowd, I'm going to say black shit. Yeah. Now, if you don't like it, let me get your white ass up and me. So, if that was hard to hear, she said that we needed to treat, uh, treat white people like uh, she said... Uh, that that was the problem with with Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders went and he spoke to a black crowd, but he was afraid to say black. Shit, okay, she 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 went on to to denigrate uh, white people repeatedly. I mean, she said you have to you have to treat them that way and keep them under their under your thumb, or they act like children. I. What what in the world could be going through a Democrat's mind to to for them to justify not condemning this? Help me with this. Well, if you listen to how what she was saying and compare that as you talked about back to the Jim Crow days, it's like the tables have been flipped. Uh, that's how you would expect back in the Jim Crow days uh, for a white politician to talk about African Americans. And I think that that's the, they have flipped the scenario as we heard our president talk about they going to put y'all back in chains type of thing. Mm -hmm. But the Democrat Party has actually flipped and they're doing exactly what they're accusing the Republican Party of doing, which we're not. So as uh, you said, that's some of the most racist comments. And you would expect that not to come from a person of color who has made it, I would say more or less made it, become a representative and understands that that didn't get you anywhere. That's what keeps, that's what the Democrats are using to keep our country divided. And with rhetoric like that, we'll never come back together. Mm. Exactly. Mm. That's, that's pointy. You have anything to add, Moy? Well, I heard, I heard, I've heard this a couple of times already too, this, this particular video. I know that she came out with her own video later, as you're probably aware, where she kind of denied what she was saying, that uh, it wasn't for uh, white folk in general. It was for, uh, wasn't even for a constituents. It was for uh, people that's in the state house, so to speak, the white politicians is elected. Or that's the way I understand it to, to go. But I'm sure she's trying to cover herself. But what really hurts me about something like this is, uh, there's a lot of us that stood up a long time ago for, for the rights of everybody. And now we're being, uh, uh, seeing this coming up and, and, uh, you know, I, I feel like, uh, I, I've always fought, fought for, for the rights of, of all. And it really hurts, hurts, it hurts me down, down deep whenever we see that we can't come together because of stuff like this is, is starting to shore up and it, and Bill's right. The Democrats are now using that as, as really part of their platform is to divide us. And uh, I don't I don't know how much you know people say well the Republicans need to prove something. Well, we 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 prove it every day that uh, you know we're we're for, for the rights of the people, no matter what color you are or what religion you are. You know, so it really hurt. It really hurts to listen to stuff like this to me. 
You know, I, I completely agree with you. I think most of the country is shocked. But if this was just, you know, I expect this from certain leftist activists with a bullhorn on the street, um, mm. which interestingly enough, that's that's how uh, Miss Matthews began her her political career. But when when you're talking about the state house and a senate candidate yeah it is i i mean i'm I, i'm i'm almost i'm speechless really because w- while we have had so we've had joe cunningham come out and and he has said that there's no mm-hmm. room for this type of rhetoric i commend him for saying that no matter what side of the aisle or what color you are i think is what it kind of the gist of what he said uh, representative, uh, State House Representative Justin Bamberg also came out against her. I don't know, you know, I, I commend him for that as well. Justin Bamberg, it wasn't in the clip that we played, but uh, in that jailhouse phone call, she trashes him pretty hard uh, individually, says his name, says a lot of pretty rough stuff about about him you can actually see the entire you can listen to the entire video uh, on the overton report youtube channel the entire phone call is there she goes after a lot of people individually bamberg is one of them but he came out he spoke against her but other than that it's been pretty quiet as a matter of fact the uh the chairman of her county's party uh leader of the charleston democrat party He said that he hopes, this is as far as he would go. He said that he hopes that she would take a step back from the Senate campaign so that they can focus on keeping her state house seat. That's scary to me. That's scary to me. Um, Kimberly Johnson. Now we'll move on to this. Kimberly Johnson is a friend of hers. And uh, what's the district that, that she runs in 64 district 64 does that include both of y'all's counties parts of both of y'all's counties yes it does it it includes all of clarendon and and i think four or five precincts or something okay it it borders richland county gotcha so has she said anything (laughs) no i haven't heard anything (laughs) no um moy you said that that you speak with the head of the Democrat party at some points. Um, have you, have you asked her about that? I have not. I have not. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sending her a letter today to make it formal, but, uh, I, I have not asked her about that. No. Okay. And for, for those of you guys, uh, for for those of y'all watching at home, we are going to put that letter, a copy of that letter up uh, right here in the center sure. of the screen. Uh, basically, it it's, I'm just going to read the first paragraph. It says, Dear Representative Kimberly Johnson, and like you said, it's, it's also being sent to the mm-hmm. Democrat chairs. Uh, we are writing to inquire about your stated position regarding the contentious recordings from the South Carolina Representative Crystal Matthews, who is currently a Democrat nominee for the U.S. Senate and a member of the South Carolina House of Representatives, where you serve with her. Within the last week, the following SC Democrats have issued statements, and you go on to talk about Joe Cunningham, uh, Justin Bamberg, also uh, Senator Brad Hutto, state senator, uh, and the Assistant House Minority Leader, Russ Ott. Uh, And you're just basically just asking for a statement. I think that this is probably one of the most important things that is happening right now in this state. And I, I commend you for this because the it, all of this stuff really begs the question, why is the Democrat Party not condemning this racist, vitriolic, hateful rhetoric? Correct. <laughs> Correct. I agree. They, uh, they, sh- they should come out and say something in the, uh, you know, the Democrat chairman sitting up there and uh, the state party chairman up in Columbia, he, he's, you know, he, he needs to come out with something. I'm, I'm telling you, if this was the opposite, if this was reversed, I can guarantee you that Drew McKissick, our chairman in Columbia, 
would already be on it. That's true. And I bet you that every, I bet you that every single, uh, at least every single democratic, uh, county party would have already written letters demanding resignations. That's correct. Yep. As, yes, they would as have. well as most of the Republican party. That's true. Chairs. I mean, I can tell you if, if I ever were to come across some recording of something like this from a Republican, I would, I would blast them to the ends of the earth. There, there, there would be no escape. Uh, I, I feel sure you would. I've, I've, I've looked, I've, I've watched too many of your programs to think any differently. Principles over personalities. That's the yeah, way it is. Right. Man. That's a fact. So, so let me ask, what do you, what do you guys, what do you hope to accomplish with this letter? And how far are you willing to take it? I'll take it as far as we have to, but what I really, you know, I, I would like to see her drop out of this Senate race and, uh, and, 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 you know, I, I want, I want to take it all the way. I want to, you know, burn the forest down. <laughs> what about you, Bill? And I agree with Moy. Uh, she, if she represents her area like this, uh, she doesn't need to be in Columbia and definitely she does not need to be in Washington, D.C. We've got enough uh, people in D.C. right now that probably quite a few of them have the same type of mind, uh, same type of thought. They just haven't come out with it. Uh, they haven't been caught saying it. They've been doing it behind closed doors. But uh, this is not who we need to represent us, or uh, represent anyone, I would say, because it discontinues to separate our country uh, with, as I say, the Democrats call it all the time, with racist rhetoric, and that's all it is. Uh, it's racist rhetoric because a person happens to be white, and I would be concerned if I was her constituents, and I happen to be a, a white constituent, I would be concerned if she's really representing me the way she's talking. Yeah, but her, her new video says that she is, you know, that uh, none of her white constituents has, has <laughs> said anything against her, you know? I you can know, understand. I can understand why. You know? They're afraid to. Yeah, I'm telling you. That's good. Of course, they're not going to speak out. She's got them all under her thumb. Right. She got them under that thumb. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm so when she was asked, you know what? We'll we'll go ahead and play a 30 second clip uh, from that before we uh, before we wind this down. Okay. So you're saying that the white constituents they are still supporting that they don't feel a specific way about you saying that you need to keep them under control, like underneath. I wasn't talking about white constituents. Well, they were just right. talking about white representatives. Was that the same is that not about racist? About is that not racist? Well, no. But, but, excuse me. But how should white constituents feel after that recording? The same way they felt before. Even after you said they that should feel the same way thumb. they should feel the same way they did before. Would you like me to read some of the messages from my white constituents? Because they know that what they heard is not true. First, they say I'm a racist against blacks when the first video came out, and now I'm a racist against white. Well, here's the raw truth. I'm against shitty people. So, oh, that's is something. that not racist? I'm only <laughs> talking about the white representatives. Yeah. yeah. First I mean, off, it, false. Mm -hmm. First off, you're lying, Crystal Matthews. Uh, so, you know, how is that not, how do you still racist. see that yeah. to be less racist? Is it less racist? It's still racist. Yeah. Wow. It's, I don't uh, know. I, so what if, what, what happens if, what happens if the South Carolina Democrat party continues to stand with her? I, I don't know all the, I don't know what the house can do as far as, uh, removing her or, or I know what we did to someone uh, in the Republican House members whenever we removed one of our members from the Republican caucus, so to speak. You know, we know who, who that was. He's not running for re-election. And uh, uh, I, I, I don't know what they can do as far as uh, punishing her for what she said. I'm just not but something needs to be done. I, I wouldn't necessarily, you know, I would hate to have to serve in the house with her 
and and uh, I've looked back at some of her, uh, some of the recordings of her speaking to the house, and uh, she she has what I call an attitude problem, you know. And uh, uh, if you look back here just a couple of weeks ago, when she was talking about some things and she was telling her that they were telling her to take her mask off, they couldn't hear her. And she was saying, oh, you got germs and all that sort of stuff. And, oh, wow. Yeah, I'm sure you remember that. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. She needs to be punished somehow. Something needs to be done because she doesn't represent South Carolina. Um, I, I would like to know beyond this, one more thing, is what does Congressman Clyburn think about this? Mm. You know, the last time that uh, someone ran against him, uh, uh, they ran to, uh, you know, that uh, after the Senate against Tim Scott, I believe it was. And he was he was a, a, a guy from here in Manning. We he beat everybody. I think he got like hundred. He got I don't know several hundred thousand votes more than the closest person. And Jim Clyburn said that the Republicans put this guy up to run against him. I mean, run against you know to run as a Democrat to embarrass embarrass himself and other folks of color. Mm -hmm. You know, if this is not an embarrassment, I don't know what it is. You know, uh, I, 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 right. It's uh, I'd like to hear his opinion. That's interesting. You know, you know who I'm more interested. In? I'm more interested because of the conversation we're having right now, and because I know that this this person is is such a close friend of hers. I am very interested to hear Kimberly Johnson's take on this. Correct. I, I, I. There's not there's not a bone in my body that believes for one second that she will do what is objectively right in this situation and condemn what her buddy said. What do you, do you think she will? What do you think? I don't know. I hope she does uh, because like, like I said, when we started off, that makes all Americans of African descent look bad to have somebody that's a representative of an area that uses her language, that has her attitude, which is straight up racist and I don't know how you can, how she can actually say, oh, that's only toward the people I serve with in the, con in the, in the house. That's not with all of my other constituents. Uh, racism doesn't go with just one particular area. If you're a racist, you're racist across the board. And the way she talks, you could tell that's what she is. And, you know, that's what I'm, and surprisingly, uh, if people don't see my face and they hear me talk, they say, oh, he's a, he's a white supremacist. <laughs> until they see what I look like. So, oh, wait a minute, I can't use that no more. Oh, no, um, what do I do? <laughs> what, what do I do now? Got to find she's another slur. <laughs> but she's straight up a black supremacist, if you want to call it that way, uh, yeah. because anytime you degrade another person because of their color exactly. and the way she talked, then you're a straight up racist. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I, uh, I don't know where Kimberly stands on this. Uh, I, I'm sure she's trying to avoid as, 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 as much as she can. Mm -hmm. I, I promise you that. And, uh, you know, she, uh, if I was her, I'd be, I, I would, I would come out and, and say, Hey, in the past, I did support her, you know, and, and stuff, but you know, now with this out, I, I don't know. I mean, I, you would, you would hope that she would do that to, to, to come out and say, I retract my support for, for Crystal Matthews at this point. You know, that's that's very interesting that you said that that you're sure that she's trying to hide from it as much as possible. I, I think that that's absolutely true. And I think that if that continues to be what she does after the after receiving the, these letters, this letter, um, that that will tell you everything really that you need to know. I think that this is one of those issues that are, it's too important to hide from. It's Correct. too important for for the cohesion of this of the state of the of your area of Clarendon and Sumter counties it's too important to just try and hope that you can stick your head in the sand and that this this will just go away it's not going away this type of racist rhetoric cannot stand no matter who is speaking it ever exactly and it's not uh, to say again you say it's not going away uh some of the Folks I watch on YouTube, uh, Brian Tatum and some other folks, this has been on their shows. Good. And actually, I think uh, Huckabee actually had a segment, her comments 
on his show. So it's nationwide now. So South Carolina is a spotlight on South Carolina to see, are we gonna let these racist comments stand? Or are we gonna stand up against them and say, this is not us. This is not who we are as South Carolinians. Mm. Yeah. That's, that's absolutely right. You know what? That's almost too on the nose for us to even continue. I think we can, we can pretty much agree to, to kind of end on that point. This is too important for all of South Carolina for us to just ignore and allow Democrats in this state to ignore and pretend like it doesn't exist. Because, look, this, this type of division, we, we can't be the, the focal point of the division of the country. We've seen what happens when we allow these, these this type of rhetoric, these type of actions uh, to, to stand without us fighting back and and I, I i really appreciate you guys writing this letter and and sending it to the people who really really need to respond to this thank you so right. much for that thank you thank, thank you. you for having us on yeah appreciate it very much absolutely man anytime uh you know i, I would always love to have you back anytime so Let's please let us know you've got my number Give me a call. <laughs> okay. Just don't Very just cool. don't send me any hate mail. I get enough. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you guys all so much for joining us. Uh, my name's Corey Allen, of course, and this was Bill Odin with the Sumter, uh, the chairman of the Sumter County Republican Party, uh, and Moy Graham, the chairman of the Clarendon County Republican Party. Thank you guys. Uh, we really always appreciate uh, appreciate right. you tuning in.